But, uh, so I've got uh, minimal participants today, but uh, I am recording it. Um, okay. You can hang around if you want, or like I said, if you want to get some time back on your plate, um, what I'll do is I will um, uh, post this up on YouTube and I can send you the link afterwards if you want. I'm happy to, why don't we, if, if it's okay, uh, are you going to hang out? Regardless? Totally cool if you're hanging out. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Okay, doc. well, let's do it. It's you and I, maybe other people will join. I don't know. This is right. a, a nice, tight, intimate session, I guess, is the best thing to, to talk there about. There you go. So what, uh, what does Boxer Advisories do? Uh, we Advisors. provide um, cons uh, organization development consulting, executive coaching, and training to uh, federal agencies and large companies. Oh, nice. Good stuff. How long have you been doing that? Uh, about 20 years. Uh, I had another company I sold my interest in uh, about a year and a half ago and then um, called Strategic Partners and I started Boxer Advisors a little over a year ago. But it's, I'm basically doing the same thing. Excellent. And, it, um, and so I just thought, um, you know, as we're finishing out the, the year, you know, I got one of your emails again. I said, well, that's probably not a bad thing to do to help get ready for the new year <laughs> get yourself up and running do you uh, I'm assuming you kind of hate you kind of hate cold calling I guess I am not a big fan of cold calling I, I'm a big believer in um, and and you know frankly haven't had to uh, for many years um, but I, I'm always interested to um, you know, refine the craft of generating business, and yep. and this is as good a time as any to think about what's working, what's not, and what can I do more of, less of, or differently uh, as we turn the chapter for 2015. Gotcha. Well, I'll tell you what the um, the reason I created this was yeah, um, it was wrapped around more because it's a process that I do on a fairly consistent basis. I've had yep. so many people come to me and they go, "How do you do this? How do you do this? How do you do this?" So right. That, you know what? I'll just throw a, I'll throw a, a, a webinar together. Um, it is a service that I offer to companies to to help them, but uh, that's not, I'm not hard pushing on that stuff today. I'll do the yep. uh, I'll do the presentation for you so you can see how. It yeah, works and, and, and yep, that's great. And and cool. I'm I would be I'll be curious to hear what you have to say, and 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 I'm more than willing and interested to hear about you know what services you offer. Um, either companies like mine or or we might uh, offer to our clients gotcha that's uh, well let's uh, let's get going here so you know the, uh, the agenda today basically about a half an hour here um, yep. and nice thing about it is I am recording it so you will have a, a copy of this uh, after the fact as well uh, to Perfect. be able to view um, so it, it all started with why it doesn't cold call work and it's uh, some digging that I did there is a um, there's a great article out on uh, LinkedIn uh, on their social selling stuff, and it's uh, seven ways people drive revenue with social selling. So one of the things they talk about is that cold calling only works like 3% of the time. I, I still think that's actually high in some cases, um, but it's decreasing at 7% a year. So that, you know, odds are against you on that one. Uh, Baylor University also did a study called Has Cold Calling Gone Dead? And what they did was they actually used a Keller Williams office um, or several offices out of the uh, southern part of the U.S. And they gave them cold numbers to call. And these are the stats that came up, basically. You know, only 28% of the people answered, 55% uh, didn't answer, 17% non-working. These reps were only able to get 19 appointments. So that's 0.3 on the total or basically 1% on the answer call. So long story short, I mean, what that shows you is, is it really, um, you know, cold calling doesn't work uh, yep. as far as I'm concerned in my books. Um, now, I'm, that I'm, said, I'm, though, I'm with you. Yep. Yeah. That said, though, there are certain circumstances. And, and when I say cold calling, I mean, it's like a straight pick up the phone and start calling someone without any information being sent to them or anything like that. I'm, you know, what I do, um, I am a firm believer in is if you do actually send information to people, a pamphlet, piece of information, so on and so forth, that at least is a starting point, a discussion point. So when you pick up the phone, at least you have something to talk about. Uh, so, you know, there are certain circumstances where I would say that's more of a warm call, bordering on a cold call, um, where things can work as well. 
So when I look at things, I look at it, I say, hey, it's you know, kind of like winning the lottery. So if you, if you find the three in the 100 who, who need what you have, then you have to actually convince them uh, to purchase from you. And of course, it's, they're going to go out to about three suppliers or, or more. Uh, so, you know, I always look at it and I tell people, if you're going to do that, the other way to look at this is turning it around and saying you're wasting 97% to 99% of your time making cold calls uh, to individuals. So, I mean, that's a, I mean, that's a, it's a, it's a tough racket. Basically. Yes, it is. Yeah. So, you know, one, one thing I always tell people too is I've been in your shoes, you know, I'm, I'm 47 years old. I've been doing this for, for years. Um, you know, I used to have to pick up the phone and dial in, smile and dial, try to get meetings and stuff like that. Um, in fact, I actually started a, uh, or was one of the founders of a software company. And I literally, this was about seven, eight years ago. And I, all I could do was smile and dial. And took that company from about a quarter million when I walked in the door to about seven million about two and a half years later. But I'll tell you what, it burned me right out. So long story short, I've been in your, your shoes. When people do this, you got the fear of rejection. You know, they, they think they're going to look stupid. You got that fear of loss. You know, the other thing, too, is pick it up and someone's going to be an angry person, basically, uh, sitting on the other end of the phone yelling at you, which no one ever wants. And, you know, it, it kind of kills your, your confidence. It grinds down on you and your lack of confidence, so on and so forth. So I actually have a different way that I look at uh, doing cold calling. And it helps you generate sales leads and find prospects who want what you want or what you have to offer and are really in a buy mode at that point in time. It's a, it's a pretty simple process you can use. So before I get into that, a lot of this is going to be online because of the stats that are showing what's going on now. 60% plus of people go online to find out about a product or service. Uh, so they start searching, they're doing their investigating and stuff like that. You know, 83% need help during that process. 71% expect media assistance if they're on your website looking for, uh, for some information. And if they can't find it, 48% of them leave. So basically half the people leave your website without ever coming back because they can't find that information. Um, and also stats show that between 70 and 80% of people actually leave your website without ever coming back again. Mm. But in this case, you know, 48% leave because you have no means of helping them out uh, or getting in contact with you. So how do you leverage this into your favor? Right. And so I say there's a five-step process here. It's pretty straightforward. One is leveraging your website or a landing page. Do you actually have a website? We do. I do. Okay. That's good. Uh, so you got a website or a landing page. Second one is leveraging email software with an offer uh, that you can make to people. So I'll go into some of the detail on this stuff in a bit here. Uh, yep. Looking at leveraging a live chat widget on your website so you can engage with visitors looking at some form of advertising or way to get it out and looking at social media. And I always throw in a sixth step, which is, you know, do follow up. This isn't really a step. It's just something that should be ingrained in your DNA, obviously. Yeah. So are, are you using any of these? Are you got a website, but do you have email software that you um, uh, send? When you say email software, <clears throat> number two, uh, are, do, um, I'm looking at stuff like AWeber or MailChimp. I'm not looking at like Outlook or Gmail or anything like that. Yeah, we we have we've used um, MailChimp. Um, yep, and live chat. I don't know what that is. Okay, I'll show you that in a little bit here. Advertising. Anyways, it's all part of a process. So I'll go through. Yep. I'll show you what uh, what I'm talking Perfect. about here in a bit. So on the website of the landing page, right? This is the first starting point. People are going online. They're trying to find information, and as they're doing this. Um, you know, they, they want to get some answers. So this here is a page that I have on my website. It's a landing page. And a landing page, there is one thing that a landing page does. It is strictly trying to uh, either sell somebody something, capture a name or an email, um, or try someone to do something, a coupon, whatever. It's literally, it is just a page without a lot of clutter on it so that people can um, uh, perform that specific action. In this case, what I'm doing here is at the top, I'm just, you know, here's a bit of information talking about live chat. And I'll get into that in a second, show you what that is. Um, and then I have a video just down below. So we see that guy, he looks like aggravated. There's a play button on there. You can play that and it will go through and explain to people what this is all about. Down below that is a strong call to action, which is, yes, I want to try this for 30 days. And they click on it. And when they click on that, then what happens is it takes them through to a contact tech page. And then on the right hand side here, that's what live chat is. So you've probably been to websites before where stuff pops up and says, hey, yes. can I help you with anything? That's what live chat is. 
And I'll tell you why you want to do that. You can see up at the top here, you can actually generate up to 10 times more sales leads from your website. Uh, and then most times, people will engage with you through the live chat. And they're the people that are actually looking for stuff, um, you know, right at that specific time. They're in that buy mode. I'll get into that in a little bit here in just a few, few more slides here in this presentation. That's great. So some of, the, some of the resources that we use, obviously, I have a website. Uh, you have a website. But if you're looking specifically for doing landing pages, um, one of the best things that you can do for, for your landing pages is look at something called lead pages. And you can find that at leadpages.net or another one called Unbounce. And I'm, I'm not going to get into the minutiae details here. But if you want, you can, you can dig into it and take a look and see what landing pages do and how right. they look based on those two. And last but not least, if you don't have a website, I always tell people, just go to GoDaddy and you can get your hosted websites there. Uh, and if anyone ever needs to get them set up, you just, I, I use elance.com for a lot of stuff on, on stuff like that. So that's kind of, the, that's the foundation, getting the website or getting the, the, um, the landing pages set up. Uh, the next one here is looking at email software and creating an offer. And it sounds like you've used MailChimp. I like MailChimp. I use AWeber and MailChimp. Um, and uh, I like both. Both have different nuances, um, but they both work you know, equally well depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Uh -huh. So what I always tell people is get, go and sign up for a service. Use like AWeber or MailChimp. I like MailChimp because they actually give you a free service up to 2,000 email names on the list. And you can send it up to, I believe, six emails a month to people. And uh, they also have a nice little automation system in the back that really dumbs it down for, uh, for people as well. Um, the other thing too I say is create something of value that you can give away. So I'll give you an example here. I've created this 25 must have sales and marketing tips ebook mm -hmm. that uh, it generates. I don't know if you, are you on my email list? I think I am, yes. Okay, you may have got this if you signed up for my email list. Um, but this ebook has gotten, you know, it's gotten me thousands of email subscribers. And it literally, it only took me an hour to put together. And how you do that is literally just think of something that, you know, your target audience, audience wants. And you just create a nice little ebook around that. And an ebook is, it could be like a one page resource guide that people could use, or it could be like five pages long, which is here's a problem, here's how you overcome that problem, so on and so forth. Have you, you ever created any kind of ebook or brochure for your clients? Uh, I have. I haven't in a couple of years. Um, yep. Gotcha. So, I mean, yep. they're simple to create, right? This yep. one, like, it took me less than an hour to pull together. How I did it was I've created, like, I have, oh, geez, I don't know how many uh, videos on my website, like 1,100 or something like that on, on YouTube. And I just pulled, like, 25 things that I've created in the past. And created an ebook wrapped around those. So that's, I mean, that's um, uh, that's how simple it is to create something like that. Now, and Chris, here is yeah. What what tool do you use to create the videos? Uh, so I use a Mac. I don't know if you're using a Mac or a PC. Um, what I do is I create, I do screen captures of my uh, video screen on certain things. And yep. like if I do a presentation, like the presentation I've got here. Um, yep. Do you use a Mac or a PC? I use a PC. Okay, so I'll, I'll talk Mac and then I'll try to talk PC, but I don't use okay. PC that much. So on a Mac, I use a program called Keynote, which is like, um, which is similar to PowerPoint. And yep. they have a recording functionality in there. So I can actually record these presentations. This presentation is actually done in Keynote. And gotcha. I can record it and then I can download it as a movie file and upload it into, um, into um, YouTube. The other thing I can do is if I'm trying to show people how to do things online, I use, there's, all you got to do is look up kind of screen capture software, um, PC or screen capture software, Mac. I'm trying to remember what I use. I think it's called uh, ScreenFlix. Um, and so what I do is, is if I want to show people certain things that they can do online or anything like that, I do yep. that too. And you save them and then same thing, you upload them. I think if you go into um, if you go into like Google and just search screen cap software, gotcha. um, you should be able to find something. There's Camtasia and I can't remember some of the other ones, but once again, I don't use, I don't use a PC all that often. So I know, no worries. We're good. Yeah. And it's all good. Actually, it's great. It's content that you're creating on a consistent basis. If you, if you feel like doing that sort of stuff. Now here's, here's the power of this thing. Let's say you have a thousand visitors to your website each month. You may not, I don't know, this is hypothetical, right? Let's say your email signups are about 3% and 
if you send an email out and it's sort of somewhat educational in nature or you know you have an offer in there as well buried in there let's just say you know the industry average says you'll get a product uptake of about three percent or six percent on this sort of stuff so you know if you take a look at it and say you know i get a thousand visitors each month i get a three percent sign up first month i'm getting 30 people signing up if i've got a product uptake on that about six percent i'm going to get about two sales out of that you know within 18 months you're getting probably you know 540 uh, email signups uh, that, that are sitting on your list and about 32 additional sales so this is just an extra way to create right. some sales for your organization that industry averages may not work for yours may not be the same as yours could be higher could be lower but it's an excellent source and now with MailChimp depending on whether you have a free version or a um, a paid for a version. Uh, I believe the free version you can't do this, but on the paid version, you can create email capture forms that you can put on your website and people will give you their name and email. So, once again, if you're creating an ebook and giving it away, capture the name and the email if you can. And uh, that's how you create this list. I mean, you just monthly send something out at least, at least on a monthly basis. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay, nope, good. So, resources, as I said, MailChimp, uh, AWeber. You know, if you're if you're a power marketer, there's other ones out there. Office Autopilot, which is now called Entreport, and then another one called uh, Infusionsoft. Um, but these two will get you out the gate and get you going. Obviously. What What's the advantage of AWeber from your perspective? Um, so the one thing I do like about AWeber is that when I send, I've got multiple lists that I've created in my in my um, AWeber account. So what happens is I have like a Twitter ebook. I have my 25 must have sales and marketing tips. I've got, what else do I have? I, I, numerous. I've probably got about 18, 20 different lists that are, uh, that are in my um, AWeber account. Now, if I want to send an email out and send it to uh, multiple lists in AWeber, I can do that. So when I go through the process, I create the email and I get to the point where I want to send it or you know, schedule it for later, it gives me the option to be able to um, send it to all the lists or select certain lists. In MailChimp, you can't do that. You have to create the email in for, for say, one list. And then what you do is you have to replicate it and put it into another list. And then you have to replicate it and put it onto another list. So it's more time consuming and they, they can only break it out by list. So those, that's kind of the major, um, that's kind of the major difference between the two. One thing I do like about MailChimp is it's, I find it's easier to create nice looking emails yep. in MailChimp compared to AWeber. So those, I mean, that's, the, that's kind of the nuance and differences between the two. Um, the reason I use AWeber is because I actually set AWeber up like five, six years ago when I set my website up and I, had, I have just so many names on it. It's almost too much for me to take it and migrate it somewhere else right now. I see. Uh, just gotcha. because of the way it's all set up, right? So I, that's why I continue to use it. Truthfully, if I, if I were to start again right now, and hopefully no one from AWeber ever watches this, but uh, I uh, I would choose Mailchimp over AWeber. Hmm. Much more, it's much more easier to use. Uh, and you know, for that one nuance I said, where you have to set up an email per list, um, it really it doesn't take too long to do that. Uh, it's just a little more time consuming, and uh, it's cool. I like it. It's uh, and I also uh, the one thing about Mailchimp is, um, say you send an email out, you've got a hyperlink, which means someone comes back to your website you can see who's actually opened or clicked and you can schedule quite easily follow-up messages to these people. So if someone clicks on a link and they go through to a specific service or product you offer on your website, then if you want, you can schedule it such that, hey, I could send a coupon to these guys to um, uh, you know, take me up on an after, offer after, after the fact. And I've done that for, uh, I've done that for quite a few clients uh, in the past uh -huh. as well. So there you go. That's, that's, the, uh, that's the subtle differences between the two. Both are great though. So you know, yep. uh, you're that's on MailChimp, I'd, I'd stick with MailChimp. Um, so now we get into the live chat thing. And uh, some people say it's annoying. Uh, I, what I tell people is you really need to take a look at um, what you're trying to accomplish. So once again, I'm gonna go back to the stats of uh, 70 to 80 percent of people that hit your website leave without ever coming back again and so you're giving up a huge opportunity um, for people to uh, to connect with you and ask questions so see the guy in the picture by the yellow car down there his name's John Leishman he's a buddy of mine. I've known him since I was about three years old 
And so what happened was I had this idea to create a live chat widget. Now there's a whole bunch of live chat widgets out in the marketplace, um, but they don't do specifically what I was wanting them to do. So John runs this IT company and he got his staff in India to help create this live chat widget, which you see on the right here. And uh. I'm just going to see if I can, no, it's not going to go into that. Um, I'll get into why we did this in a couple of seconds uh, mm -hmm. and I'll show you the results that he got. And okay. um, so once again, I go back to 60% of people go online to find out about products and services. 83% of them need help doing their investigation online. So think about it this way. As a live chat widget pops up and asks, do you need help? Is there anything you need you know, dear, you know, while you're on the website? Whatever it is. So you're addressing that 83% that need their, their, their help online. 71% expect immediate assistance. Nothing like a live chat widget being able to pop up and actually uh, help them or have them click on it to pop up to start asking questions. And then once again, if you don't have a mechanism for people to engage with you, 48% will leave, try to find something else from, some, from other people. So that's kind of the stats that we look at behind this stuff. So long story short, what it means is engage and ask questions with the live chat uh, uh, with the live chat um, widget on the website. So in this case, with the software we created, um, we went out and we tried seven or eight, I can't remember for sure, seven or eight different live chat software packages in the marketplace. And we just couldn't get them to do what we wanted to do. And why, why I say that is some of them sit on a website and don't pop up. They force the visitor to click on them, <coughs> sorry, to, uh, to ask a question. The other ones you know, will pop up once, but they won't pop up again after that, or you know, they won't automatically pop up. So what we did was we created one that would pop up three different times. So what we found is we popped this up within five to 15 seconds when someone hits your website to see if we can you know, engage with them. We don't get a lot of people engaging. We usually wait about a minute to a minute and a half after that and pop it up again and ask, hey, you're still here? Is there anything you need help with? We get more people actually engaging. And then last, we wait till about two and a half to three minutes. And why, you know, at that point in time, with the people that have still remained on the website, they're poking around, chances are they're looking for something and they start engaging. We see kind of, you know, about 65 to 90%, depending on the websites. On the third chat, people start engaging and start asking questions. And that's how you start creating sales leads for your organization. And the right. other thing you can do, what you see here is this is in the offline mode. Um, and so if people aren't actually uh, manning this live chat, um, you know, you still give someone an ability to give you their name, email, and phone number, and then ask you a question. And I'll give you a quick example on this. I have a, uh, a, re a residential heating and, and uh, a plumbing company up here in Calgary that I work with. And they put this on their website, had it in offline mode for like pretty much 24 seven. And we went in and took a look over about a one month period and said like, do you guys realize uh, that you're getting all these people asking questions? It turned out it was almost worth a quarter million dollars in quoted work on a monthly basis. So, you know, if you figure they could get like a third of that business, um, right. you know, they're getting like 80,000, they're almost making an additional million dollars a year. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Their company was only doing about 2.5 million. So it was a huge potential uplift for them. So this is why, you know, this is why we actually created this live chat software so that we could um, get people to leverage it and put it on their website and use it. So there's kind of the, you know, I always tell people take a test too, is uh, I'm sure you have competitors. You can always go online, go to their websites and see if they actually have a, um, a live chat widget on their website. If they don't, or a vast majority of them don't, then you've got yourself a nice competitive advantage or a tool that you can use to engage with people before your actual uh, competitors do. So it's a great way to uh, to generate sales leads for people. Now, it's Chris. It, it sounds as though with this live chat widget, you can have it be in two different modes. Yep. Um, offline or someone manning it. Um, yep. And so on your website, who do you mind, who mans yours? Who mans mine? So that's actually the guy that was in the picture, John Leishman there, his, uh, his company, he has a bunch of people, uh, expats from Canada and the U.S. that live down in Mexico. And uh, they actually 
man my live chat. And that's a service we actually offer to people. We had, you know, because I, you know, I realize when I'm working with guys, sometimes they're, you know, a single uh, sole entrepreneur or they've got, you know, a handful of people and they don't have time to do that. So right. it is a service that we actually offer. Um, and how do we do that is typically we would ask, you know, I'd go like, Ken, why don't you tell me a little bit about your business? Give me like 10, 20 different questions that you get asked, right? And so when our people are online, um, if a question is asked, like, what about this? What about that? If they have the answer, they'll be able to, um, we have a little text box, which is drop down and they can click on the answer and it will just, you know, feed that live chat, um, yep. that information in the live chat. The other thing we found though, is that people are open and receptive. If you say to them, um, you know what, we don't, um, or I don't have the answer to that right now. How do I get someone to either email you or call yep. you with right. the answer? And you know what? A lot of people are like, sure, here's my, here's my contact information. Right. And you know, that way no one, you know, if you don't have the answer, people aren't going to hold that against you. Um, so that's, I mean, that's, that's something we do. So the way we do it is we tell business owners, you can do it yourself or you yep. can have us do it, or we can have a hybrid where you're online. And all of a sudden, if you're getting inundated, we have the staff that can back you up that'll, that'll you know, at least engage with you as well. So gotcha. that's, I mean, that's one of those services that we actually offer as well. All um, right. And, so and, kind of, that's, and go ahead, and, sorry, Ken. And that's all right. And, and if um, I'm assuming I can go on to your website and see this in, in, um, yeah, in, in action. action. Yeah, yeah, you know what I would go? I would go to, uh, you can see it in, on my website, or you can go to geeksontheway.com. And that's G-E-E-K-S on uh, O-N-P-H-E-W-A-Y.com. And if you go on and you just type anything in, um, you can just say, hey, uh, Chris Chris told me to test it out here. And they won't hassle you or anything like that. They'll just they'll email back, go, okay, great. Have yourself a great day, stuff like that. And you can be able to see how they, uh, they interface. You can do the same on my website. Um, but uh, the, the Geeks website is, uh, is also a place where you can do that as, as well. Gotcha. And, yeah, I'll show you actually something on their website in a little bit here and how much it uh, impacted their business in a second here. So we've got, you know, you got a website, you got a landing page, you got an email marketing system, you got the live chat. Now, one thing I get from a lot of people are, I don't get a lot of web website visitors to my website. So what I tell them is set three or four and five is kind of things that you can do to um, drive more you know, targeted traffic to your website. And the first one is advertising. The second one is using leveraging social media in different ways. So in the advertising sense, what I look at is I always tell people to use Facebook, LinkedIn, or Google AdWords online. Um, you know, if you want, you can, if you have trade magazines or anything like that, you know, you can even use offline stuff um, to, to drive people through to your website as well. And, you know, in this case, if you are using ads and pushing people to your website, at least, you know, what you're doing is instead of just driving traffic there and not doing anything with it, you're trying to engage with them. You're trying to give them something to give away so you can get their name and email so you can continue marketing to them over uh, a period of time uh, or ongoing. So that's kind of how that works is, is both with social media and advertising. Um, the whole idea is capture name or email, and that way you can continue marketing to these people. So these are the three big ones online. Each one has their own different nuance to it. I'm going to see if I can, uh, uh, sorry, I had to go to the next slide to see if I had anything in there. Um, I like Facebook. I used to hate Facebook for ads. Now I like it. Reason being inexpensive. Um, yep. the, I, I run Facebook ads for this webinar. And in fact, um, the clicks are costing me, I think about 26 cents a click to drive someone through to my website, which is totally inexpensive compared to LinkedIn and Google AdWords. You know, on, on LinkedIn, you pay a minimum of $2 per click. On AdWords, it varies, it's all over the map, right? But uh, typically you're not getting clicks for about 26 cents um, on Google AdWords, unless you're doing something phenomenal. Um, Facebook's great because you can pick people based on their interests. LinkedIn's awesome because you can actually pick people based on multiple categories. So titles, companies, um, size of companies, you can pinpoint it. Are you, are you on LinkedIn, Ken? I am. Okay. So the, yeah, the LinkedIn ads are great, but they, are, they can't get costly at two bucks a click as, as a minimum. And then Google AdWords is, I like it. It's for specific things. 
it works well. Um, I don't think it would work necessarily as well for, for what I'm doing. Um, not knowing enough about your business, I don't know. But if you don't do things properly in Google AdWords, I mean, that can burn a hole in your pocket extremely quick. And I'll show you mm. that in a second here. Is um, I always tell people, here's how you can reduce your AdWords costs. So uh, I'm based in Calgary here. Uh, right. Calgary Furnace Repair, if you actually do a click, if you, if you have an ad up on Google AdWords, each click on average is $18 per click. So that, like, that's if someone clicks on your ad, you pay $18. Wow. And if you got a conversion rate of like 3%, so a conversion rate being that's going to turn into a sales lead for you, then you're spending almost $600 for that lead to come in the door, which is not in, in, in the HVAC world, not unheard of. Um, for people to spend that kind of uh, money to try to drive a sales lead to their business. And so what we talk about is if you can put live chat on your website, engage with these people, you're making your AdWords work better. And I'm, I'm using a hypothetical here of about, you know, giving you a five time greater conversion rate than, uh, than what you have just based off AdWords. What you're doing then is you're reducing your cost per lead down to about $1.20 uh, or $120 uh, per lead. Live chat itself will engage or convert higher than that. So that, that number, hypothetical, could actually be even lower. Um, so that's one of those things. Are, are you, do you use AdWords or anything? We don't. Okay. Uh, yeah, and that, I, I'm not, not familiar with it. So yeah, that's so something it's, I might, it's, we might check out. Yeah, it's like if you go onto Google, right? Any of the ads that are on Google. So yep. if you look up like... Uh, uh, sorry, are you out of the? You said the was it Baltimore area? Where are you out? Uh, in, in, in closer to Washington D.C. Or Washington D.C. Yeah. Sorry, yes. Yeah, um, that's all right. So the uh, you know you could look up um, like um, limo rides in Washington. Limo limo limousine services in Washington D.C. Right? If you yeah. go to Google, it'll come up with a whole bunch of ads in the uh, in the display results. So yeah. that's that's what ad ad words are. Uh, Social media, do you have any social media accounts apart from your LinkedIn, which I heard? Yeah, we uh, have a, we have a corporate Facebook account and, and have used Twitter a little bit. But, okay. And then uh, we're on, just because I do a chunk of work uh, in the government, there's a government uh, site called GovLoop uh, that we, we use. So that, that's Perfect. what we, yep. You're, you're ahead of other people, so that's, uh, that's always a, a step in the right place. The, um, the way I look at social media, and, and once again, you know, Ken, I'm just scratching the surface here. I'm not really going into the details on a lot of this stuff, but it's more meant to just kind of educate and just show the realm of possibilities. Right. Um, in this case, a lot of people, how they end up at this webinar is I will tweet stuff out. And if you look up at the top here, it says, why are, uh, why are you cold calling? Get more sales leads with proven process. And then it's got a short little link there with dld.bz forward slash blah, 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 all that stuff. Then yep. I got, what I've got after that is what they call hashtags. And a hashtag is hashtag success, hashtag lead gen, hashtag sales. Yes. And on the other one, I've got hashtag marketing. And what hashtags do, I don't know if you know what hashtags are. What they do is if people are searching for specific things on Twitter, uh, by putting the hashtag in whatever it is, um, and in this case, let's use marketing. Um, then my results will show up because I'm trying to say, hey, look, you know, this is specifically wrapped around marketing. And yes. then hopefully what I do is I entice people with the, with the call to action there, which is, you know, see how you can get more uh, up to 25 times more sales leads compared to cold calling. And then they click on that link. Then I drive them through to this um, how to stop cold calling um, landing page, which then shows them, you know, it says claim your spot here, click. And people will um, be registered to uh, to show up for this event. So gotcha. that's kind of how that's how I use Twitter. Uh, I do the same with Facebook. I've got a landing page on or a, a business page on on Facebook that I do the same sort of stuff with. Um, so that's kind of that's high level what you do with that stuff. So and last but not least, follow up, right? So I mean, follow up is always imperative to make sure that you uh, you get the uh, uh, the business coming in the door. One thing I always tell people when they look at like a process, like tying these five steps together, is that you have to understand people are in different spots during a buying phase and they're exploring and investigating and doing different things. So the whole idea behind this is, you know, if they hit my website, at least like I said before, you wanna capture a name in an email or engage with them with live chat and try to get a name in an email or a phone number or whatever you can do. And you know what, 
just literally nurture them, get them into that email marketing system, and then create some content at least on a monthly basis and send it out. So, you know, typically when I tell people, if you're, if you're sending stuff out that's educational in nature, you know, you could send out, uh, depending on what you want to do, it could be 100% educational or, you know, do like 90% educational, 10% offer. So like, you know, if you got 10 things sitting in your, um, in your, uh, in your email newsletter, nine of them are educational. And then one's a strong call to action, like contact us for a quote or a, you know, uh, introductory cons consultation or whatever it is, right? Yep. Nurture them along, bring them along and try to get them into, uh, into that funnel. Uh, and you'll be top of mind, obviously, once uh, once people start getting into that buy mode, get ready to get going, and they'll reach out and contact you. So my suggestions on when you're nurturing people, what you can do is create a monthly email at the minimum. If you could, you, you know, if you want, you could send stuff out weekly. You can do webinars. So when I tell people to do webinars, it's you know, pick a problem that's predominant in your industry, and then kind of aggravate or or, or show people how that problem you know, impacts them. And then on top, of, on top of it is, how do you solve that problem? So example, the webinar I'm doing today, right? You yep. need cold calling, come here, let me show you a process that you can use to actually do this stuff. Um, and then last but not least is, you know, eBooks. Use, like, create some eBooks. They are so simple to make. Um, Ken, if you don't have my 25 must-haves, what I'll do is I will send it to you so you can see yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, that, that would way, be great. You'll yeah. have like a template to go against on something like that. That's great. The, so I'm going to use a couple of use case examples. We're coming, we're coming close to the end here, Ken. So and that's all um, right. We're good. Good. So I've got uh, geeks on the way. That's that guy, John Leishman, who was sitting in yep. the picture earlier on. There he is. Yeah. So what he did was he was actually he was using Google AdWords to draw people in, and over time the effectiveness just wasn't there anymore. It was slowly losing its effectiveness, and. So he was trying to figure out a way how he can actually boost his sales again. So that's where, when I came to him, I said, let's look at this live chat. And I said, you know, let's put it on your website and see what we get. So what we found is that when people hit his website, about 12 to 15% of these people kind of, you know, literally it's about 25 to 30% will engage, but on the overall traffic, about 12 to 15% will actually engage with them and take them up on their offer or whatever they're trying to do. Now, the nice thing about this, though, is these people are readily engaged and they're looking to buy. What he found was it's adding 15 to 20% additional revenue to his, um, to his monthly figures. And it yep. varies between those on a monthly basis. But you know, just by throwing that up, he's, uh, he's getting 15 to 20% more revenue uh, for his company. Yep. So um, let, let me ask you, do you yeah. mind, can I ask a question? Sure. So what is it, I mean, I can have, you know, our webmaster, she might be familiar with this, but yep. is there a ballpark on what it, I'm assuming, you know, there are two costs, the cost to install the widget and then the, the cost to maintain it. So actually to install it, it's, it's, uh, it takes like about 30 seconds. Um, uh -huh. And you know what, I will send you, I will send you a pricing guide. Uh, yeah, that's on great. What we, on what we do and that's, how we do I it. Appreciate um, it. And then that way, you know, I'll show you the way we do it is there's a cost if you just want to use the software on a monthly basis. Yeah. And then there's if you want to use our people to engage, there's yep. a cost and it's based on a per chat engagement on that stuff. Uh, yep. So I'll send you that information. I don't know it off the top of my head because there's different pricing levels. No worries. Uh, but I'll get no that worries. for you. And then that way you can always take a look and see does it make sense. That's now, the good. other thing we do is we actually offer it free for 30 days on either of things, if you want to do it yourself or if you want us to man it so that you can see if it's even going to work for you. I think that's, so, yep, good. So that is, that's something that we do so that you don't have to, you know, you don't have to put it on your nickel for 30 days. Let's just make sure it works. And that, I'm a big fan of, you know, let, let's see if it works before you, uh, before you start paying for stuff, right? So yep. that's, uh, that's one of the things. Now, in this case, what he's found is if you look at that Baylor report or, or the, um, the other LinkedIn report that I actually referenced earlier on, um, the amount of traffic that he's getting and the amount of, of sales leads that are coming through the door is it's 40 times more effective than his cold calling. So, you know, in that Baylor example, it's like one in every, I think it's 333 calls 
generated a sales lead, he's getting 40 leads for every 341. So, I mean, he's, this is way more effective than picking up the phone and smiling and dialing as well. Right. Um, his added benefit is he's, he's lucky. He's already got the staff, so he has no additional costs. He's already paying for these people. And he's got a team of, there's probably six to 10 that are taking um, calls or, or taking live chats on the website at any given time. So he's lucky. He has the staff that can handle it, so there's no additional cost for him on this stuff. So that, that revenue he's getting is literally just 15 to 20% right to his bottom line. Uh, well, right to his top line, right? Every, uh, every month. So right. it's good for him. The other one I've got is uh, there's a roofer in Ottawa, Canada. I'm not even going to mention who it is because he gets insane results on this stuff. Um, he gets for every three chats, he's generating two sales wheels. Uh, so he's got a 66% uptake on this stuff. And what he's done is he's found, he's kind of more of a commercial roofer, but he also gets residential people contacting him. Well, what he does is he actually takes the residential leads and sells them to residential roofing guys. So he generates money off of creating sales leads for people uh, on his website. So it's an additional revenue stream for him on top of it. Because whereas before, he would actually just say, we don't do residential. He was telling me this. I said, no, keep them and sell them to, uh, sell them to uh, a residential uh, roofer. And they'll buy the leads off you. So he's, it's insane. He's, he's getting you know, 220 times the average. Now, the other thing too is, I just want to make sure that you know, guys like you can understand that there are cases where this doesn't work. So that's why I do offer this for 30 days, right? So that, um, at least the, the live chat stuff, so that um, people can see if it's gonna work or if it's not gonna work. The other thing I would say is not all leads are qualified. Some are really bad. And I'll give you an example. Like on my website, Sales Tip of Day, it's just, it's strictly a blog, right? And I threw live chat up just to see how it would engage with people. And I, I literally, I have some people that come through and they go, can I get sales tips? And I, I you, you kind of, you look at it, you go like, did you even look at my website? Every day there's a new post going up with a sales tip on it. So right. I, you know, so that's why I say not all leads are qualified. Some right, are bad. Sure. Sometimes it doesn't work for people. So I don't want anyone to think coming away from this that rose colored glasses is going to be the best thing ever. You have to, you have to try it to see if it works. And that's why yep. we offer the live chat yep. for 30 days for free. Uh, just tying the process together really quickly. So here's the advertising. Right at the top is a Facebook uh, ad. The second one is a LinkedIn ad. The bottom one is using Twitter to push people through. I push them through to that website that I referenced earlier on um, yes. with uh, different ways to engage with people and contact names and, and email, emails on this stuff. And I have a strong call to action that puts people on an email list. I engage with them. And that's how I generate sales leads. Um, for my, uh, for my business or for what I do here. The one thing I always tell people too, is if you are using advertising, experiment a little bit, you know, check out the different, uh, the different advertising, uh, means that are available to you, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Google AdWords, um, but be very cognizant of, um, what your costs are. You can set budgets up on a daily or a monthly basis. Um, so that you don't burn through a lot of money. I've seen people literally they just, they don't really put a budget up on these things or they do, they put a huge budget up and they'll blow through like a thousand dollars in a day, not doing this in the, in the smartest way possible. So experiment is what I tell people. My Facebook ads are generating way more people to come to these webinars than my LinkedIn ads. And in fact, I just turned huh. my LinkedIn ads off, um, huh. on the 24th. So like two days ago, I turned them off because I just didn't think they were generating enough leads for me. Right. Uh, once again, here's my, here's my live chat offer, Ken, if you're, um, you know, if you're interested, I'll send you the information, uh, yep. after the fact, or, you know, That's uh, great. other people are going to watch this. You can reach out to me at Chris at sales tip a .com and I can send the info, um, you know, try free for 30 days, all that stuff. There's my, there's my contact info. I think that's it. Yeah, there we are. So Ken, do you like, do you have any questions? There's a lot to take in and yeah. Like daily. So one one question I have, and and um, well, I've got a couple of questions. W one is, w what advice do you have um, other than advertising uh, that's the most effective tool that e that either you use or you help your clients use to uh, leverage. Uh, LinkedIn or or Facebook contacts and generate leads. Um, 
What's the what's the best? Right I this. use. I am thinking right now. There's a couple, right? So um, one would be Hootsuite. Um, yeah. And I don't know if you've ever heard of Hootsuite. I've so heard what, of it. I, okay. I'm not. Yeah, but I I, I we don't. I, I don't think we're we're using it now. Okay. Yep. So what Hootsuite is is it's a dashboard into all your social media. So you can connect uh, like a Google Plus profile, Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn. Yep. Uh, I'm trying to remember this. There's lots that you can actually do, right? And it gives you the ability to um, see if people are engaging with you. It also gives you the ability to send out information. So say, for example, I don't know if you blog on your website. Um, I, but we if do. If, yep. Okay. If you, yeah, so if you're blogging, a couple of tips you can do with blogging is, um, if you create an article, at the very end of the article, have like a call to action. So if you say, um, here's what our service is, um, blah, 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 so on and so forth. At the end, you can put contact us for a free consultation, click here. And it could, and, and that way they'll come through and they can email you. Yeah. Always have a strong call to action in your blog yeah. posts because yeah. then that way people will actually reach out to you. Because people are inherently lazy. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah. They get to a website, they get to a blog post, and they'll read it. And they're like, this is great. How do I reach this guy? Right. And so, so have a means for them to be able to reach you. So that's one. Now you've created a blog post. What you can do is you can go into Hootsuite and put something up at the top, right? So I'll give you an example for one of mine that I've done recently. I interviewed a guy named Bill Cates and he writes a book called Beyond Referrals. Yes, I saw um, right. Yep. Yeah, I'm so familiar so with that, him. what yeah. I will do is I will say, uh, learn, uh, you know, just hypothetical off the top of my head, learn the three tips you need to do to generate better referrals. And then what I will do is you, you take your, your link for your post and you put it into Hootsuite. Well, I'll tell you what, you're online. I'll just pull it up right now. I may as well just do it and show you what, it, what, what you can do. All right. Um, so, let me move that off to the side. Let's go in here. And one of the things that it does is I'm in, I'm using Google Chrome. This is yep. something called Hootlet, which will allow me to do that stuff too. But I'll show you, I will go into Hootsuite. And my internet's a little slow, so you just have to bear with me here. No for worries. I will go into sales tip a day. I haven't updated my blog in a couple of weeks because I'm just getting set to relaunch a new site on January 1. So I will take my last post that I did and I'll show you a couple of different ways that I can do this. Yeah. Um, and sorry, you can't see this. I got to move stuff around on my screen because it, it's poking up. So don't keep me a secret. There we go. Um, so I'm going to click on this yep. and I've got this link here. So I copy that go into Hootsuite and what I can do is go, here is a great tip on how to get referrals. Oops, I should type better. Then I'll type that in and then it will Shrink that link down because it's super long, right? Yes. Um, it will actually shrink it when I pick certain profiles. So I'm going to send this out on, uh, no, actually, let's not send it out on that one. Let's send it out on the sales tip of day that I have here. And then what I will do is I'm going to put a hashtag in for referral. So I want people to understand that. Now, the one thing you can do here is, and I'm just going to copy this so I don't have to redo it again, is now I can just send now if I feel like sending it. So I've hooked up my Twitter account here. I've got a Google, uh, Google Plus here. I've got Facebook. I've got a whole bunch of different social media accounts that are hooked into this yep. system. I've got LinkedIn and everything like that. You can you know, click on multiple of these and it, it will send it out to a bunch of different ones. Uh, like I'll click this Mad Weekly one here, uh, I'll click Peer Diligence. So it's going to send it out to three and I click send now. So that just tweeted it. And so once again, this is a high level on this thing, right? 
But this now allows me, I've got all my different social media streams across the top here that I use. I've yeah. just sent a tweet out to, um, to three different sites so that, you know, it's, it's taking that link and hopefully people look at it and drive them back to my website. Another way you can do this, there's another tool called Buffer, which I've got here, or this Hootlet thing. So I'm going to click on this. Yeah. And it'll pull it up in a sec here, hopefully. And yeah, don't keep me a secret. There we go. So once again, I'm going to go marketing or hashtag referrals. And I'm going to send this out on that account. I'm going to send it out to Facebook. I'm going to send it out to my LinkedIn. And then the nice thing about this is if you're using Google Chrome, you can go download this. Uh, and I'm probably talking at a very high level for you, but don't worry. I can, that, help you right. with this later. I can help you out with this later on too. Um, then what happens is I've got this and I can either send it out right now or when I click this button called auto schedule, yeah. it will post that at different times throughout the day. Yeah, right. And that way, what it'll do is it'll, pro it'll try to optimize when you, um, when it, one of the best uh, yep. uh, times that you can do this. So I just click that and that's tweeted out, right? So it's gone now. Now, what I'm hoping is that someone will go out into to, you know, Twitter or my Google or my Facebook or anything like that and they'll see it. There's a link on it. They'll click on it and they'll come back here. So it just keeps driving tra traffic back. And then when I was telling you, when you get to the bottom of a website and put a strong call to action, what I do is I put my, you know, stop cold calling webinar. You can, in the U.S., you can text this, you can do that. Or if you click here, basically, boom, it'll bring it up and it will, um, you can uh, claim your spot right there. So put gotcha. a strong call to action in each of your blog posts yes. for someone to do something. And that way right. you'll actually increase the amount of uh, traffic that you get on that sort of stuff. Now, the other one I was telling you about was something called social oomph. And let me get into that. So what I, social oomph, what I like about it is it will, It allows me to huh. actually create a tweet. And then what I do is it's very similar to um, what I was just talking about. But one thing I can do is I can create a same thing tweet here. Whereas yeah. you know, Hootsuite, I sent it out once. What I can do in this is shorten that link and then I will put a hashtag so someone knows what I'm looking for. And I can schedule this and make it recurring. So I can send this out like every huh. day for like seven days. And I can pick multiple accounts. I can pick what That's time it wants you want it to go out and everything like that. So this allows you to keep continually send that out without having to go back in and keep doing it. So it automates that process. Gotcha. I'm not going to send it out, but that's a good tool. Yeah. Uh, so there's a couple of different tools that you can use. The that's other thing too, when you're leveraging like LinkedIn and um, other things like that, um, you know what? One of the things that, that I have used and is worthwhile looking into is something called Contactually. Um, yes, we use it. Oh, do you? I love it. Yeah. I love yeah. Contactually. Right? Yeah. And, it, yeah, it, I it, like it. I, 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 I believe we could. I, I want to believe that we can leverage it even more. I. Um, let me ask you, Chris, just because I'm, I'm conscious of the time. Yep. Um, do you, you know, um, I, one, I, I don't know how much longer you're willing to continue this, but do you, do you do work? Um, maybe you could send me your rates on what it, what you, when you work with smaller consulting firms, what, what does your rate look like? And, and I'd also be curious to know, do you have any relationships with people where they're valuated resellers of your services? So, you know, interesting you should ask that. So first, first question is, what are my rates? And here's how I actually operate. It's, it's um, yeah. I, I often tell people what I will be is I will be an architect that pulls a solution together for yeah. companies. 
And that solution is dependent upon kind of what are you trying to achieve? Um, yeah. And then what I do is the guy that I had referenced before, John Leishman and myself, what yeah. he does is he's got all this staff that are, you know, university educated people that are down in Mexico, Canadians, oh, Americans. Medium, right? And then what I do is they're smart enough. And I say, here's how we deploy this. And what I do is we turn it over to them and their rates are substantially lower than mine. So we try to make it so that it's a cost, um, uh, a, a cost advantageous uh, solution for, uh, for individuals. Right. So you know, long story short, I don't, I don't necessarily work directly with, um, with companies. Um, and the, like I said, the, you know, unless someone brings me on, for a, for a long-term kind of contract and, and it really makes sense. I, I don't really do that. Now, like I said, what I do is I architect, I pull a solution together. Yeah. Um, and then what we do is I have less expensive people yeah. um, deploying it for me. And when I say less yeah. expensive, they're like, you know, anywhere from like 10 to 20 times less expensive than me. Yeah. Um, so you get my smarts, but you also get people that know how to do this and yeah. get it out. So I'll, yeah. I'll send you the rates on that stuff. Yeah, so I mean, the, I mean, one of the, I mean, like for instance, I have a number of questions around contextually, and I, you know, we 